So this morning I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Siemens subsea power grid. And you can see a nice picture of it here. So traditionally, if you have a subsea, um, if you want subsea power for boosting or for compression, you would run separate cables from the top side down to each module. So here we have a, a separator, we have a compression station and a um, dual pump boosting station over here. And historically, we'd run separate cables to each of these. Each motor would require a variable speed drive topside, and all this takes up uh, valuable space on the deck, and obviously a lot of weight. So to reduce this and to improve the economics of the field, Siemens is putting all this electronics power equipment subsea, and we're going to take a look at that in a bit more detail now. So as we fly through our subsea system, we come down to the uh, power station. So this is the, the power transmission and distribution station. And this has been part of a multi-year qualification program that we've been working on since about 2010. And we're just coming to the end of it now. So all the units that we're going to see have been uh, assembled. They're currently in the factory acceptance test stage in Norway, in Trondheim. And then later this year, we'll put them all in a dry dock in Norway and perform a shallow water test. Now here we show them all the units sitting on the template. This is uh, because our Norwegian colleagues like, like uh, template structures. Obviously in deep water, say in the Gulf of Mexico, West Africa or Brazil, we probably use a different foundation structure. So, so don't, get, uh, don't get excited about the yellow steel. Uh, let's focus on the grey steel that we sh show here. So first of all, we see our subsea transformer. So we have a power umbilical coming in from the host facility. And this power umbilical will run at, say, 36 up to 132 kilovolts, depending on the distance from the host to the subsea center. And then we transform down in the transformer shown here to our distribution voltage of 36 kilovolts. Our second module that we see here is the subsea switchgear unit. And in each of these canisters, we house a pair of Siemens gas insulated uh, breakers. And these are circuit breakers similar to what you have in your house, but obviously much bigger, to, uh, to protect the power systems from any, any faults. Now every AC motor requires a variable speed drive unit to control the motor. And Siemens has been making variable speed drives for topside applications for many, many years. And now we have them, we see three units here, uh, subsea units. And these are all rated for 10,000 feet water depth at 3,000 meters. And they're all oil filled and pressure compensated. So there are two ways to build a build power electronic subsea. You can either have a pressure exclusion vessel and all the electronics are at one atmosphere. The, the downside with this is that the smallest leak leads to an immediate catastrophic failure because water rushes in and, and it's game over. So Siemens has gone for the perhaps uh, more rigorous approach and by filling the units with oil, we now have no differential pressure across the across the enclosure. However, it does mean that every single component has to be qualified for 30 years in oil and for the depth pressure and the temperature rating. So our multi-year qualification program has been taking every single component and testing it to make sure that it's going to last for the design life of 30 years. So tying all these modules together, we now have our, um, our DigiGrid control system. So this is a high-speed control system that can use either fiber optics or uh, copper-based modem technology to send and receive signals from the top side. And so this uses an open architecture system. Uh, so we can plug in anybody's uh, third-party interfaces to this. So for example, a process control system from a, a separate vendor and so on. And this also includes all the condition monitoring. And if you've been on our booth for previous sessions, you'll have heard us talk about uh, condition monitoring.
Linking all these modules together, we have a number of different connectors. So Siemens makes wet mate connectors ranging from one kilovolt up to these connectors shown here, which are 45 kV. So these are 45 kV wet mate connectors. And we're just finishing qualification of those in our Ulverston facility in the UK. But over on the Christmas tree, we make uh, subsea pressure and temperature sensors, flow meters. Uh, we have the, the wet mate connectors and the feed-through systems to bring the data back from downhole all the way through the control modules back up to the surface. And finally, we provide direct electric heating systems. So DEH is a system that allows you to heat the flow line to prevent uh, hydrates and wax formation. And, and we do this by strapping a, a cable to the pipeline and the electrons flow through the cable and then back through the pipeline. And by conductive heating, we uh, put the heat into the, into the flow line. And this is typically limited by physics to a distance of about 30 kilometers. And Siemens has therefore been taking some of the power grid technology and using this to generate subsea DEH systems. And this allows us to go significantly further distances to heat the pipelines. So we can combine the subsea DEH and the topside uh, DEH along with the power grid and that gives us the potential to eliminate a second flow line and a second boosting station. So this uh, obviously has a significant financial impact on the, uh, on the field development. So just to conclude, we have our, our subsea power grid that I've given you a quick overview of here. So it's modular. Um, and hopefully with this approach we can reduce cost, uh, risk and complexity for the project. Also being modular, it's scalable, so we can, we can drive pumps from small uh, ESP applications all the way up to large compressors. And by eliminating all the topside power equipment and the umbilical hang-offs, we can reduce topside costs and installation costs as well. Siemens, ingenuity for life.